Hey everyone, welcome back to Adventures of Well, I'm me, and today I'm going to be doing a video that I've been planning for a little bit. It's just taken some time to get around to doing, and that is a video on the Backbone one. I have the PlayStation Edition, which matches the PlayStation 5 aesthetic. Um, if you watched my last video, you know that was uh, a video I finally got a PS5. Um, and something that I wanted to go along with that was a mobile gaming experience or a portable gaming experience. I absolutely love the Nintendo Switch. I love what the Nintendo Switch has done for gaming in sort of that hybrid um, mode where you can play docked and have a higher resolution on your TV or you could play portably using um, the Switch itself uh, playing with lower resolution but you still get that full fun Nintendo experience. Um, my desire for the Backbone 1 was that I'd be able to play games either remotely from my PlayStation or my Xbox. Um, I have an Xbox One S, um, so using Game Pass for that, or even just enjoying the mobile gaming experience using apps natively to my iPhone. Um, I currently have an iPhone 13, uh, which does fit okay. I was a little bit worried about the uh, cameras hitting the framing uh, across the sort of back bar there. Um, because they do sort of sit within that region. There is some rubber stoppers that are in place that sort of support the phone as well, which um, it does fit. I did have to remove the case though. It cannot fit with a case, um, or at least the case I was using. It's very tight fit um, to fit within the two slots that sort of clamp around it, which are uh, rubberized ends. Um, the screen protector does fit on the front, um, but barely, like we're talking millimeters, fractions of millimeters to get this to fit right. Um, I had a protector over the cameras on the back of my phone uh, which I had to take off because the added depth of the protector actually stopped it from fitting into the, um, the, the um, device itself, the backbone uh, clamping system. Uh, they do have an adapter that you can plug into the backbone one which is sort of like a rubberized silicon sort of adapter which allows you to play with the larger pro models um, of the iPhone 13 and 14 I assume that that fits as well um, which is there I don't think that allowed for the screen protector case or the back uh, protector over the cameras either um, just with the way that it was set up I would have to play around with that again but I've got a spare uh, protector for my camera. I don't necessarily know if I want to use that though. Um, a few things that come with this whole talk about iPhones at the moment is in the future there's no longer going to be a lightning port and this is a uh, pretty much hardwired in uh, lightning port that you have on the backbone. Um, so anything past the iPhone 14 uh, at this stage won't necessarily work. Um, which does make it a little bit difficult in terms of the ability to <laughs> to say this has a long life ahead of it. I'm intending to have my iPhone 13 for quite some time, so for me it will work um, as long as the software is getting updated. Otherwise, Android users possibly have a one up there as well if um, they're adding the Android and that has a USB-C port, maybe they can convert that across for a new model. But as it stands, the current version of the Backbone 1 won't go into the future with the iPhone as they adjust their ports. Uh, now let's talk about the actual experience of gaming on the Backbone 1. It's quite simple to get started with your uh, device. You're just slotting it in, making sure the lightning port aligns up, and pressing it together. Now, when I first got mine, this led to a little bit of a problem. I plugged it all in, ran, like, ran through some of the setup, and it was working great. Took it out, was playing around with my phone later on. Thought, oh, okay, trying that time to actually get back into the game, play around with it, let's have a look at some of the apps that I've got. And all of a sudden, the circle button wasn't working. I could not work it out. Tried unplugging it, plugging it back in, cleaning the contacts, wasn't working. It was just bizarre, and I was ready to file a warranty claim, and this was the day that I got it. Um, so I was a little bit frustrated with that. But going through the warranty support sort of things before you get to a part where you actually submit your warranty claim it says check your iPhones up to date check that the backbone device is up to date and I'm like okay I need to go through this apps up to date great 
the device has the most current firmware because that's what's listed when I got it. Checking my phone settings, there was a 0, 0 0.1 update, so it was the current version of uh, iOS, point something, point something, it had 0.1 to go up. Updated that, plugged it back in, it worked fine. Now, this hasn't been a consistent fix though. Occasionally, I do have to uh, rub off the contacts on the lightning port um, to get it to work. This is going to happen. It will have some connectivity issues at times. Sometimes I feel like it's to do with the way that the orientation of the app launched. It's supposed to launch in landscape and it opens up in um, portrait. And I feel like that sometimes plays around with the way that the settings work. Or if you're juggling between apps while it's getting set up, I feel like that sometimes has an issue as well. I put this down to the fact that it is that you are plugging a device into the phone. So just be aware of that as you might get frustrated like I was and find that um, <laughs> the device is not working. And a few steps, check everything's up to date. So app, firmware of the device and your actual phone itself. Also check that you've cleaned the contacts recently because that is going to play a huge part in that. As long as you're doing that, it should be working and working consistently. So, now that I've got it plugged in, I've got the phone on there, it's great. The screen size is good for, of course, apps that you have natively on your phone. It is something that you'll probably have to get used to when you're playing a console-based game on your phone. You think of the screens that you're playing with. I have a 65 inch television that I use for my PlayStation 5. Going down to the size of a phone, it is a little bit different to get used to. UI elements often do shrink right down um, and that makes it difficult. Apologies for the lighting. I'm shooting with daylight in the background and clouds going on and off constantly. So you will see a drop in color here. Back to the content. So what you'll find is that in the gameplay, there will be things that you can't necessarily read. Um, this isn't something that can easily be adjusted. Yes, you could change some font sizes in some games for uh, for support for people with vision impairment, but that's not going to be the fix for everything because not every game does it in the same way. There are going to be some elements where you do find it hard to read or you do find it hard to sort of fit everything in that screen the same way as they do on a larger screen with the scaling. Um, but that aside, as long as you are playing a game where you know what you're going to be going through um, and you don't need larger font size, it, it can be a completely viable option for playing some of these uh, remote play style games. Um, one issue that I found particularly with the PlayStation 5, um, the remote play on there, uh, if you're required to use the touch bar on the game, I find for some reason the way that they've set up their device uh, support for the remote play works great with all the button configurations, but the home button and the touch bar, you have to touch the screen and go through a few prompts to get things to work. So for the touch bar, it's literally just touching the top center part of your phone. Touching it once brings up the button layout, Touching it again will then do it as a tap, and then touching, touching, holding will do it as a hold. And I found this really frustrating in the game that I was playing at the time, which was um, Strangers of Paradise, Final Fantasy Origin. Uh, most of the interaction, so use, picking up items, using ladders, activating switches, uses that touch sensor bar in the game. Which meant that when I was playing, I had to constantly stop my hold, touch with my finger, and then go back to my hold. And it was really disruptive to the gameplay. So really it does come down to whether or not um, a game is supported for remote play properly. And a game that's supported for remote play properly, in my opinion, is one that does not use that touch bar. Um, and that's a bit frustrating. The other one to get into, sort of, if you're wanting to swap the game that you're playing, because you are remote controlled into your console. Your console is running. If you turn your TV on, you will see that the console is there. You could connect your controller and use it straight away. To get the home button to go back to the main menu of your PlayStation and switch things, you have to touch the screen, bring up the three dots for like extra options, touch that to bring up a bottom bar, which will then have the home button there or the PlayStation button there, which you can then press to go back to the menu. And I found that a little bit finicky. 
I feel like there could have been a little bit extra effort in terms of Backbone's design to add a PlayStation Home button onto the actual device itself. And I only list this because it is listed as the PlayStation edition of the Backbone. Um, so that is something that could have been used between the design of the controller and in working with the remote play system. But besides those little finicky things, I really have enjoyed my experience so far playing my PlayStation games using my phone, primarily in the house. So whether my wife is watching something on TV and I'm wanting to play a game on the phone, but I'm wanting to play the PlayStation 5, that's been great because then I don't disrupt her TV uh, watching and I am able to play a game that I've been wanting to continue. The second thing is sometimes I like to play games in bed, often I'll play the Nintendo Switch in bed, and this has given me an opportunity to play some of the PlayStation 5 games that I'll be playing and go, all right, time to pack up, go to bed, I'm still not ready to go to sleep yet, I just wanna sort of hop in bed and get a bit warm if it's a cold night. It's given me that chance to play those games in the bedroom, on my bed, without having a TV in our bedroom. Um, and that's been great, it worked well for that. Um, using your own home network, the lag, um, that you do find is very minimal depending on your speeds. Um, so my home network, I have gigabyte down and I have 50 meg up. And that has worked perfectly fine in the house for me. Um, the other night I took it to my parents' house when I went for dinner. Um, so I was playing using their Wi-Fi network connected to my Wi-Fi network via the internet to then get the PlayStation 5. There was a large delay getting it to connect in the initial boot up of the PlayStation 5. Uh, there was a lot more jittery and frame rate issues that were occurring, but not enough that it ruined the gaming experience. Uh, overall, that worked pretty well. Uh, the next part that comes with that is using cellular. I don't have a lot of data on my uh, phone that I can use quite often. I get sort of to the end of my monthly plan and I'm down to the last 20% of my data. If I was to start streaming with this device to play games using cellular, I would probably chew through a lot of the data. So I haven't really tested it on that experience yet. But if I was going to do something like that, I would probably um, take one of those uh, portable Wi-Fi routers that connect via cellular data. So, you know, you connect your phone, your phone SIM in, you plug it in, and you can use it as a little modem router while you're, say, on a holiday. I would consider doing that and having dedicated data rather than chewing through my phone's actual data for my everyday use. Um, but that's just a me thing. I know other people would have a lot more data. Some people might even have ridiculous plans where they've got unlimited data, and that might work for them. Um, I currently use a 4G network. I'd like to test it on a 5G network and see what that's like. But I haven't really gone to any place where I'd be needing to test that. And if I was taking the backbone with me on those trips, it would be minimal usage where I'd actually be using the PlayStation 5 Remote Play or the Xbox Remote Play. Um, the only other thing in terms of Remote Play, I will talk briefly about the Xbox. Because this is designed as a PlayStation controller, the button configurations do not line up with what you will see on your screen as prompts, which can be a little bit confusing. But I found that because you can do cloud gaming with Xbox, I feel like the integration of the games might work a lot better. I haven't played a lot of the Xbox games though while doing my testing because I primarily focused on the PlayStation 5, hence why I got the PlayStation Edition and not the regular one. Um, I did connect it. I found it a little bit harder to connect in the home network to get my Xbox to start up to get um, streaming. And also with the remote play, I found that I couldn't do a lot of my 360 games that I have downloaded to my console already. That might have just been a temporary glitch. I'll have to try that again. Um, but I had recently had the Xbox actually turned off to save some power because I wasn't using it. Um, and I had cancelled a subscription to Game Pass um, temporarily. I had reactivated it when I got this just to try out a few things. So that's the console remote gaming um, aspect there. The other thing that I've actually surprisingly really enjoyed on my phone is going through and finding the games that have controller support on the App Store, and I actually paid for some Apple Arcade to try out some of the games there. I previously had a trial for Apple Arcade, and I played the Castlevania game a little bit. I played um, a few other games, such as uh, 
the Oregon Trail that they remastered and put up on there. Um, and playing some of these games on the phone, I do find frustrating when you're supposed to be sliding your finger around on the screen as a touch interface. You end up smudging your screen, and then it's really frustrating to look at, especially if you're in a situation where the lighting is impacting the screen, you find that you've got smudges everywhere. And I always find that a major disappointment when I am playing mobile games, and one thing that I tend to not engage in more, I guess, active games on the phone, I tend to play it more so those time management based games where you do a few interactions and then you've got to wait for it to play out. Playing a game where you are actually in control of a character, like a platformer, on a phone, I've avoided for a long time, but it was actually so enjoyable going, I can sit here and play a Castlevania light game. It's not the same as the Castlevania games that I've played because it has weird short chapters and challenges that you have to complete. Um, and there is that sort of grindy mechanic so they can make some money if you want to put a purchase in there. But having these options to play some of these games is great. I downloaded um, Adventures of Mana just last night of recording of this video, uh, just to test out what that game was like. It was a remake of one of the original Final Fantasy Adventures Mana games. I think that you can get that in the Mana collection on the Switch um, as the original Game Boy version. Anyway, played some of that uh, remaster last night, which is just an app download, and I found it quite fun. I found the controls worked really well. The only thing is, because you don't have an instruction manual with you, sometimes looking for prompts and information on how these apps work is a little bit frustrating because they're set up for like a controller or just the touch interface and you're missing some of those instructions. But that's a me thing. That's nothing to do with the backbone itself. Um, so playing some of these games has been great. I've actually had some fun just going, you know what, I don't actually want to play a Switch game or I don't want to play a PlayStation game um, before I write a bit. I'm just fiddling around on my phone and go, I'll play a couple minutes of this game here. Um, and I've really enjoyed that. It has actually really opened up some of the mobile gaming experience that I don't think I would have had previously. Um, now, the elephant in the room when it comes to any sort of, uh, any sort of gaming related thing is cost. In Australia, this is $179. That's expensive. It's very expensive for a controller to use with a phone. But, if you intend to do a lot of remote play or mobile gaming, it might be worth it. Depending on, one, if you've got the funds to do it. If you have that money, by all means. Like, if you're happy to spend that, I'm sure you'll get good use out of it. So there's that aspect. The second aspect to consider is the fact that you're able to do mobile gaming. So if you have a subscription to um, Apple Arcade. It might be worth your time to actually have a device like this where you can connect it into your phone and play. I know there are other alternatives on the market, but I don't have them. This is the one that I chose to get. It has that potential to open up and unlock a lot more with your device for these games. Is it worth it for everyone? No. It is worth it for people that have the money and are willing to spend the money on that. If you're looking at this as though it's going to be a different controller option that you can then use instead of buying a second controller. Probably not the best way to go about that because you, you can buy a controller for cheaper and if you don't really have a lot of intention to mobile, mobile game then it's probably not worth it. If you're doing it because you're in a multi-person household and sometimes people are using the TV for other things that's where it might get a little bit more use out of it. Like I was saying, when my wife wants to watch TV and I go, oh, I want to play a PlayStation 5 game, I can do that. That's what was great about the Switch. I could then sit there and play a game and she'd go, oh, I want to play this other game on another console. I'll take the Switch off and then I continue playing my game. Having those options for the consoles that don't have portability is great. Um, yes, you can remote play onto a laptop. Yes, you can remote play onto a desktop, but this way I can lie on the couch with my device and play. Some of the other benefits that come with this are the fact that for an iPhone it gives you a 3.5mm jack on the bottom here, which means I can plug in my gaming headsets that use the 3.5mm into this device and there you go, I've got that audio there. 
over the top earphones that I enjoy that I don't want to have to convert to connect to it and I don't want to necessarily connect my Bluetooth because I already have AirPods connected and then I have this issue where all the Bluetooth devices want to connect to different things when I just want to connect to that one device. I like having my AirPods for my phone, I like having my Bluetooth headset for my computers where I can then go and use that. I like the idea that I can plug in my headset using a cable back into my phone and use it for gaming. The other thing that is also great is that it does have a lightning port on the bottom of the other side of the controller, which means that you are not going to have your controller, or your controller, your phone go flat while playing, and also the fact that um, it uses the power from the phone, so that, that gives you that opportunity to have the controller charge your phone as well as keep the controller working. Um, I should have said those back at the start of this video, but that doesn't matter. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this little dive into my experience with the Backbone 1, and I hope that um, you'll consider subscribing and continuing to watch some of my videos. I'm going to sign off now because my robot vacuum has just started to vacuum around the area. So take care everyone, give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't subscribed, and hopefully I'll see you in the future where I'm intending to do a lot more gaming.